Come on. Hey, hello everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night. Again, wherever you are in the world, good to have you here. My name is Hans, the Storyteller Nordic, and it is December 27, and I have another Stearman tale for you. And now about the 10 most asked questions about Stearman biplanes. Yet that's a 1940s biplane with a tail wheel. Good to have you here. And uh, the, um, what I want to tell you, first I'll tell you who I am, why I do this, and then the 10 most asked questions. And then I have a giveaway for you, and then it will take about 20 minutes to to uh, the whole presentation here. Hans Nordzik, also known as the storyteller, that's my name. I'm a long time aviator. I flew the big Boeings all over the world for KLM. I flew small Boeings, the Boeing biplane, Boeing Stearman biplane. I flew many airplanes. And since 15 years, I do storytelling theater shows in Europe and also in America. And now today, it's December 27, we can only go physical. We cannot go, uh, we cannot, we only can go virtual. We cannot go physical. So I want to share some of my passion for Boeing Stearman's biplanes. This is such a model of a Boeing Stearman biplane. You see the number in reverse because that works on my iPad, it get mirrored. It shouldn't harm any of my message that I want to give to you. Um, what it is, it is, you know, I, I did many, many shows around my Stearman that's called the Old Crow. And it's now hibernating, it's in, in winterization. And um, I, 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 got, I did many storytelling shows and I got many questions from people from Holland, from Europe, from France, Germany, England, Belgium, and also now do it in America as well. So I get many questions about Boeing Stearman biplanes. And I want to, add to, to tell, tell you these questions, including the answers to, the, to, the, to these questions. It will take about 20 minutes and we're going to start right now. My storytelling hat. Now I was a captain on the big Boeing 777 and 787 for many years, instructor. And then uh, I do my thing in the big Boeings. I retired some years ago. And now this is my storytelling hat. I put it on. I'm now more in the artistic level of telling the stories. So um, the 10 most asked questions about a Boeing Stearman biplane. This is a Boeing model of a Boeing Stearman biplane. Two wheels up front, one in the back, a radial engine up here, and two wings. Again, now my airplane is called Old Crow, Boeing Stearman Old Crow. You may have seen it, uh, or Google it, and you'll find pictures of it. It's a black gold livery. It's virtual today what I do. I'm not with my airplane. I have this airplane to illustrate the 10 questions that I got during my shows. Question number one about this airplane is why does it have two wings? Why does it have two wings? Well, there's a good reason for it. I always tell the story. Well, you know why two wings? Well, try to walk on one leg. Now you can do it, it's not okay. And now try to walk on two legs. So that's why two legs easier than one leg. That's why two wings is easier than one leg, one leg, than one wing. Well, the real story is that the, the biplane concept of two wings comes from the early age of aviation. And at that time, people, we didn't know we could make an airplane with only one single wing. So we might as well, we might as well do say, well, we make one wing here and another wing here, and then structurally we strengthen it with uh, these things here and um, um, all kinds of strengthenings between the two wings, and then it will be a very sturdy and strong structure. So it's about, it's a, the answer is it's about structural necessity that we started to build in the early age of aviation airplanes only with two or three or say even more wings. Later on, we found out as humanity, we could even make an airplane with one wing and an airplane with one wing is more efficient. You can fly faster. 
that's why. So that's the reason why these airplanes have two wings. The airplanes were made, these ones were made in the 1940s and they were used as trainer planes for US, Canadian and Allied pilots. 300,000 pilots learned to fly on airplanes like this. And Mr. Lloyd Stearman, the original designer and builder of these airplanes, um, he before this airplane he made mail planes, planes to transport mail, and he could guarantee to the American government when they saw, oh, we need to fight a war here, we could guarantee uh, a certain reliability of this airplane instead of two, uh, one person and a mail, a mail and room for mail. I can make an airplane with two uh, seats, one for an instructor and one for the student, and then you can learn to fly. The, um, you can learn to fly an airplane, and um, you know if you want to learn to fly an airplane, it doesn't have to be fast, it doesn't have to be efficient. It just has to be a good teacher, and a Boeing Stearman is a very good teacher. Next question was why 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 does the airplane has a why does it have a radial engine? You look at here, there's a radial engine with a seven or sometimes nine cylinders and patterned around like a star, seven of them. Why is that? Well, in the early age of aviation, we had the problem that they, they, of cooling the engine. The airplanes were slow and if you fly slow, there's, a, there's not enough air going over the engines to cool it. So in, initially there, these cylinders, they get hot during the flight. In the inline engines, they were behind each other, the cylinders, like a block. And then it's got to, the engine start to be very hot. So they came up with the invention, why, why don't we hang them in the breeze? So they're sticking out in the breeze and that's for cooling purposes. There are some other more advantages and also disadvantages for a radial. And that was basically the main reason why there is a radial engine on, on this airplane. The next question I get all the time, I'm at airports, air shows, I'm flying, I'm landing my steerman, I get people coming to me and said, well, Mr. Pilot, isn't it cold to fly the airplane? And then I said, well, yeah, it's, uh, yes, it's very cold and I love that. Well, isn't that a disadvantage? No, it's a, it's a big advantage. When it's cold outside, it's cold inside. I, I give the example, if you go to the forest, you want to enjoy nature. Do you want to stay in your car or do you want to go out and smell the nature and feel the cold or the rain or the, or the snow? No, I want to go out. Exactly. That's why. The question, is it cold in the airplane like this? Yes, it's cold and it's hot and it's wet and it's all kinds of things and it's living it's living in nature, the purity of flight that makes thermal flying so good. If you fly low over a field with onions, you smell the onions. So the fourth question I get all the time, where did the instructor sit? I told you it's a trainer plane from the 1940s and the, there, were, there are two seats here, one here and one there. Where would the instructor sit? Well, what would you think? Where would the student sit? Where, where, where would the student sit, you think? There or there? It's here. The student would sit in the back. I was initially thinking the student would be up front and the instructor in the back. Now, the student, the guy or girl who wants to learn to fly, was sitting in the back and the instructor was sitting up front for two reasons. One reason is that if you want to fly the airplane solo, due to center of gravity, there has to be somebody in the rear cockpit. So when you want to fly solo, you have to be in the rear cockpit. And there's another reason that in preparation for flying other airplanes in the war, you had to be familiar with an airplane that while sitting on the ground, you have a very bad visibility up front. And the worst visibility you have in the, in the rear seat. So the student was here and the instructor was up front. The next question I get all the time is uh, question five. Isn't it slow? Isn't it a slow airplane when you fly? Because there's a lot of things hanging in the breeze. Yes, it is a very slow airplane. If you want to go somewhere fast and efficient, take something else. Don't take a steerman. 
if you want to travel in style and you want to taste the purity of flight, which is for me the same as the purity of living, there's hardly a better airplane than a Stearman. It flies slow. If you want to go from A to B, it takes a longer time. The big advantage because you will have more fun. You will stay in the air longer. So yes, it's a slow airplane and that's a big advantage. Another, another question I get is um, from uh, how much fuel does it use? Well, now here's the engine and the fuel tank is right there. It's about 45 US gallons. 45 US gallons f fuel is here. And um, how much fuel it uses? It uses about, uh, let me see, because I'm familiar with liters. Uh, it uses about, uh, about 12 gallons per hour, 12, 13 gallons per hour. If you say it in, I, I tell it always in liters in Europe, and a liter is about a quart, and it uses about a quart per, per minute. And I tell the people you now how you will drink your beer tonight. One beer, a liter beer per minute. The airplane drinks about one liter or one quarter of fuel per minute. So, and then I normally get the laughs. Um, oh, another question. The, the, when you fly these, these biplanes and what you, what you want to cover what you want on your head is 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 something like this it's a, a flight cap and the goggles they look good and they're also very uh, practical because it will it will uh, keep the dust or the flies or the oil drops away from your it's protection of your eyes and another question i get always about the scar or the shawl this is what the shawl, shawl of scar, or scar is. In the early age of aviation, they put it around like this, and then they would fly. And I normally don't use it anymore. I use it in the beginning because it looks good. You know, you look good, you look cool. I can tell you, although it's slow flying, when you fly in the airplane with a scar like this, you get almost killed by it. It's hanging in the breeze and it's always, always killing your neck here so yes during taxiing and on the ground you look like mr cool cat with your shawl during flight it is um it's not very practical i don't use it during the flight now in this first world war like me i have a leather jacket looks good as well uh is it very practical well uh, a modern ski jacket is more practical more warm and it you now leather looks far more cool than a, a, a red or a blue ski jacket. In the First World War, they had the, the, the aviators. They uh, in the wartime, they had to look in their airplane, and they had the leather jacket on. They had to look for where is the enemy, and like this, look around where is the enemy, and they started to to get pain in the neck because of the cold of the uh, leather. And then they, they landed their airplane and their fa their mother or their their uh, wife said, well, I know something. I can make a scar, a shawl, and you can put it around you to, to protect your neck. And then you can look around again for your, for the enemies. So that's the, that's the habit of using a shawl uh, in old airplanes. Ah, and question number nine, I get that, is how much does the airplane cost? especially people in, uh, in in Europe or in Holland, we want to know how much things are. Um, I, no, I'm, I have no, I'm, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of um, secrets, so I, I can tell the prices of these airplanes. A, a Boeing Stearman, if you buy a good one, a good one that will last for a long, long time, you pay somewhere in dollars between 80 and 150,000, 80,000 to 150,000 dollars that you pay, depending on the condition, depending on the extras, the luxury in the airplane, depending on what type of engine, propeller, etc., etc., modification, electronic equipment. So that's about what to buy an airplane, what's about it, what it costs. How much is an engine? If you want, and you can still buy them. They, they, they're being overhauled. A new engine, a standard new engine for a Stearman will take 
will bite away almost forty thousand dollars and for one engine and the engine will last about 1200 flight hours 1200 flight hours which is for me i fly about 30 hours a year so it's about 40 hours 40 years 40 years the engine will last then the big question about the fuel how much is the fuel cost well my american visitors and my european European visitors, well, this is a head scratcher for all of us. The fuel in America, a gallon of aviation fuel, F gas, goes in there. That is about uh, about five US gallon. About five US gallon for a, for a gallon of aviation fuel. Like me, if you fly in Europe, it's about 11 us dollars for a gallon so about two two and a half times as expensive as in uh, the united states so and for the rest of what is expensive is the you need to pay the hangarage uh, somewhere between 200 and 400 dollars a month you have to pay your insurance somewhere around two and a half to three and a half thousand dollars and then you have your regular maintenance etc etc I normally don't like to talk about money and at the end of the day, of course, you know, we all need to pay our bills and it's, it's my experience that uh, I tell this story also to the young people. No, it, it's, if you want to do something in life, you, you have to go for it. And I had young people coming to me, Hans, I want to be a pilot. And I normally say, well, if you want to be a pilot, you are a pilot. I say, well, I don't have the money. I can, why can't I get the money? Well, that's the wrong question. Because if you want to be a pilot, you will find the money. Or in other words, the money will find you. So that's not an excuse to not do your, to not live your life to the max, to not live your dreams, to not fulfill your desires, not fulfill your passion. So you have to go for your passion and then somehow the money will find you to pay for your training. I did it. And if I can do it, I tell the kids all over the world, you can do it. I'm not better than any of you. If I can do it, you can do it. The last question um, I, uh, I get of the 10, ten last, uh, uh, question number 10. Why, Hans, when did you buy the airplane? I said, well, about 30 years ago with two friends of mine. And, uh, hey, Rich, I will answer that. How many Stearmans are still flying? Good question. Thank you for watching. There's a question from one of our viewers. How many Stearmans are still flying? To be totally honest, you should always be honest. My father told me that we have, we don't know exactly. I know in Europe we have about, oh, about 100, 125, something like this. And I think in America there are a lot more. Worldwide, it's it's my guesstimate, somewhere around 1,000, 1,500, something like this, are still flying in all kinds of conditions. 8,500 were built at that time, 8,500 flying models in the 1940s. And of those, about 1,500 are still flying. And 2,000 were built in spares in the 1940s, 2,000 in spares. Why the airplane is still flying? Because after the war it was used for a crop sprayer. Uh, it was an agricultural airplane. Many of them were used for crop spraying for many, many years in the 50s, 60s and even in the 70s. And that's why they kept these airplanes airworthy uh, all the time. The last question, Hans, why do you buy an old and slow biplane like this with a tail wheel. Why, why this type of airplane? Well, again, the, the real answer is, I have no idea. Uh, why do I like this? Why do I like things in my life? And why do I like pancakes? I asked the children, why do you like pancakes? Well, I, I just like pancakes. I have this also, I just, you know, I, I, I fell in love with this airplane. Well, the technical answer would be it. It is. It's the purity of flight, and it's it's a robust airplane. It's not that hard to maintain. It's a sort of a lady airplane. She has 
she has a character, so you should be. It's not an easy airplane to fly all the time, so you have to be there to control the airplane when it is needed, especially in a crosswind landings on a hard surface runway. So it's and it's the nostalgia that's connected with it, and it's the the airplane that is sturdy and it separates in the man's ego world. It separates the man from the boys. So basically that's that's it. And when you fly in the airplane, you're sitting here in a beautiful summer day, it's in the 80s, 90s, or it's about 20, 30 degrees Celsius. You can sit in your t-shirt here. And it's like a it's like a flying Harley Davidson. And you look at the world from a thousand feet above, down below, and you're sitting there and you see the big propeller shining in the sun. You see the, the play of the light in the in the wing and you make small turns. And maybe you're alone or with with a passenger, and it's it's beauty and it's enjoyment and fun be, be beyond words. Uh, people ask me in that, well, can you do aerobatics with it? Yes, you, you can do aerobatics with the airplane, and I don't do it a lot because again I like I like to enjoy the purity of just being in the air and also feeling privileged that I'm allowed. To fly this airplane still in in 20 year 2020 and and beyond and one more thing i like to tell you is hans oh, why do you want to convey flying a steerman to the next generations for two reasons two reasons why i want to convey i'm 61 how long am i still allowed to fly can I still do this? No. There's a next generation hopefully knocking on the door. For two reasons. Number one is to show the living history of this airplane. To show what this airplane has done. And to show the pilots who gave their life for our ultimate freedom of today. So we always should keep on telling that story. That what happened in the 1940s. And there's a second story. And yesterday I told... I talked about it with my good steer, steerman friend Sean Hovuk. He's also a Delta Airlines pilot on the 767. Is that I, I want the new want the new generation to enjoy the airplane as I do, and I learned a lot from the airplane. The airplane has been my teacher, my professor. I learned decision making. I learned to polish my character. I learned not to show off the airplane because uh, aviation has uh, their, her potential dangerous issues. So I learned to use my eyes. I learned to use my ears. I learned to use my hands. I learned to convey messages to my passenger. I learned to, to, I learned to read the, the weather. I learned to read the crosswind. So many, many, many things I have learned in my life while flying or landing or taking off that I can use in my regular life. So, and as we say in aviation, if you can do it up there you, in three dimensions, it's easier to do it here on two dimensions. So that is, the steerman was a pilot maker. And nowadays I conveyed it to the young generation and their parents, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, and it's a big teacher. That is the reason why. So these are my 10 questions and this is concluding the Stearman Tales of today. Not without pointing out that I give free virtual online uh, presentations, lectures for you worldwide for your aviation, your virtual aviation event. And you can book me. There's a link in here. It's I can be booked via the EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association in America. If you are not a member, shame on you, become a member and you can book me for your aviation event, virtual aviation event. I have five different stories I can I tell, five different subjects. Stearman's, flying the Boeing 787, excitement of flying and two other more. You will find me on the EAA and then look for speaker bureau and here is the link as well. So, now I love... I love to share my passion of flying, which is from equal to the, my passion of living. And it's December, it's, I'm in, in the Netherlands, in Europe, it's almost 6 o'clock in the evening, it's cold and windy. 
and I so much hope that in 2021 we can literally open the gates, we can open the doors of our hangars, we can hug our friends, we can shove the airplanes outside, we can take a coffee and we can enjoy flying and we can enjoy life again next year. With these words, I like to thank you for watching. I wish you a very prosperous new year and we hope to talk and see each other uh, next time. Thank you for watching. My name is Hans, the storyteller Nordic. I'll be back.